Previously on the channel, we took a look at Vicuña and installed it with Docker Compose. Uh, yes, I know, I was pronouncing it wrong, and I probably still am, but uh, I had a viewer correct me on that, so hopefully Vicuña is the right pronunciation. Anyways, today we're going to take a closer look, and we're going to be setting up email notifications. I'll show you how to enable and disable registrations, so not just anyone can register on your Vicuña instance. Also setting up the front-end URL properly, so it works correctly with linking through your emails and whatnot. Let's get started! I did want to mention that Vicuña did swing by and uh, comment on this video and say, nice tutorial, I fixed the wrong formatting on the documentation, and they also added my video as an external source. So I want to say thank you to Vicuña for swinging by and commenting and also fixing the documentation formatting. So thank you so much. All right, to get started, I think Vicuña does work better behind a reverse proxy. I was able to get the email notifications and all that working without it. Uh, but for whatever reason, the email uh, images in the email and the links didn't seem to work unless I used a reverse proxy. But anyways, you can see here in the address bar that I did use vicuña.thehomelab.wiki. If you do go to this address, it won't work for you because I'm going to disable it and take it down and use a different one for my own personal use. It does work a lot better, and in my opinion, I think you should use a reverse proxy. And if you want to know how to use a reverse proxy and uh, Nginx Proxy Manager with Cloudflare, you can do that. I do have a video on how to do that. If that's what you should do first is set it up behind a reverse proxy. So let's get started on how to change the front-end URL using a environmental variable in your Docker Compose. So once again, we're over here on the Vicuña documentation page. And if you go down here, you can see this little link here that says config options. And this will show you all of your environmental variables. And what I'm going to do is just punch in control F. We're going to find front. And there's the front end URL right here. And I'm going to take this right here. This is the environmental path. We're going to copy this. And we're going to jump back over into our terminal that we were using to install. And uh, we're going to change this and add this variable in there. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now that we're in the terminal here, you're going to make sure that you're CD'd into docker forward slash vicuña, where our docker files are. Let's go ahead and take a look. There's our docker compose. We're going to go ahead and nano into that. Nano into docker dash compose dot yml. Here it is right here. We're going to arrow down right here into our environmental variables. I'm gonna go to the end here and make a new space. We'll space in and then we'll just right click right there. And that should paste that in there. We'll add a colon and we did vicuña. Make sure I spell this right. Vicuña dot the home lab dot wiki. And this is very important. You wanna make sure that you do put a trailing slash. So that is a very important thing to, to note there. And then we will save this by doing control X and then hitting Y for yes, and then hitting enter on our keyboard. All right, now we need to do a Docker compose and then down. In order for this to make the changes, we have to bring it down and then back up again. So we'll let it go down. Usually takes a few seconds to uh, disable and shut down all of the images or the containers rather. And then we'll do a up dash D, and then that will make our changes go into effect. So now that we got that fixed and taken care of for the front end URL, let's go ahead and get rid of this register button because personally, I don't want just anyone registering on my Vicuña instance if they just so happen to find it. So let's go over to the documentation and uh, find out what variable we need for that. Back here on the documentation page, I'm just gonna hit control F to find the registration. And here it is right here. I will grab this environmental path by highlighting it you know the drill, right click and copy, and let's head back over to our terminal to paste this back into the Docker Compose. All right, so I'm just gonna hit up until I find nano Docker Compose. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the file here. Let's do what we did before. Go over to the last one in the environmental. We'll space in and we will right click to paste that in here. We'll add the colon and we will have to put a zero. You can't put false, you have to put a zero. So we'll add a zero and then we'll save this by hitting control X and then Y on our keyboard and then enter. Now we have to do a Docker compose down. Just hit up until I find it. And there it is. We'll bring it down and we'll reset it once again. And now we'll go ahead and up until we get Docker compose up. And there it is. We'll bring it back up. All right, now let's head back over to Vicuña to see if it worked. If everything worked properly, this registration button should disappear when I refresh it. So let's go ahead and refresh and it is gone. Now, if you want that back, you go back into the compose and you put a one instead of a zero. The one is basically true and zero is basically false. 
just so you know that moving forward. Okay, so let's go ahead and get logged in so we can look at notifications through emails. And I wanna show you guys this little test I created here. Uh, what I'm going to do is go into it here. And I wanna show you that when I set a reminder, it will actually send an email. And you can do that using, I'm actually using Google's SMTP server. And I'll show you guys how to do that with all the environmental variables that you can put into your Docker Compose. But click on set reminders here and then you'll click on add a new reminder and it will let you add reminders in five minute increments. So right now it is 2.13 p.m. I'll go to 14, which is 2 p.m. And then I will put it at 2.15 and there it is. And this is actually very accurate. Now I wanna show you guys what this also looks like on my phone. You see this title here will show up actually in the subject of the email. So I know that that is a reminder from the Cunha. So here we are in my inbox on my phone. You can see I set up a bunch of different tests. You can see the emojis and the titles. And this is what an example email looks like when it comes in. Uh, this is why it's important to get that front end URL properly set up. So the links in the footer and the big blue button you click there will take you to the proper task. That's it. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to show you guys how to set this up with Google's SMTP servers. Uh, so you can add those environmental variables right into the Docker compose file. I've added seven additional environmental variables to the Docker Compose file, starting with this one here. This is the service enable email reminders is set to one. Mailer enabled is set to one. Force SSL is set to one. The host is going to be just smtp.gmail.com. The port will be 465. The username will just be your Gmail address, and then your password will be your Gmail password. You can get this on the homelab.wiki. I created both Docker Compose files, one with and one without the email notifications. That way you don't have to search for all the different variables on the Vicuña documentation. When you're done adding those variables to the Docker Compose file, make sure you do a Docker Compose down and then a Docker Compose up dash D for those changes to take effect. Another thing that's important to mention is attachments. I'll show you an example when you try to upload an attachment for the first time in Vicuña you might run into this issue here where it shows you a server error. There's two possible reasons why this could be happening. The first one being you need to make sure you have the enable task attachments environmental variable set to one in your Docker compose file. And the other being a permission issue. The files directory within your Vicuña Docker directory does need to be writable for this to work. And without those permissions, you just simply won't be able to upload attachments. This can be a potential security risk if you do plan on exposing this to the internet, so make sure you know that moving forward. If you do make these changes, make sure to do Docker Compose down and back up again so the changes do take effect. Okay, let's see if it works. Let's upload an attachment. I'll use this thumbnail as an example, and there it is. It even shows the size of the file there. You can download it, copy the URL, and even delete it. So I'll just delete it. Now it's time to use Vicuña. You're all set up and ready to go. Using Vicuña is pretty much self-explanatory. Creating a new list is like adding a new category for your tasks. You have to set up a default list, and in order to do that, you just create a new list, and then you'll go into your settings, and then under here where it says default list, you'll type in the list that's already been created through the front end. That way, when you go to add a new task, it won't error out on you. It'll just add it in there. Usually it adds it to the bottom of the list like so. And you can see that it did add it to my default list as tasks. As I said previously, using Vicuña is pretty much self-explanatory. So with that being said, me to cover namespaces and lists, labels and teams, I don't think is a very good idea because all that stuff is documented very well on the Vicuña documentation. For me to add another 10 minutes to this video wouldn't be very fruitful. And I think with the information I provided in this video is a great stepping stone for you to get started to using Vicuña. So with that being said, what do you think? Was it helpful? If you thought so, go ahead and drop a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Hit the bell icon if you want to know when all my videos drop. I thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And don't forget to check out the website for Vicuña at vicuña.io. Be sure to check out the homelab.wiki. That's where all of the compose files live that I created for Vicuña. And all the examples will be there for you guys to copy. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below. That's going to be it for today. Bye for now.